2014, Senator Schwank was approached by some constituents who were advocates of trying to attempt to get industrial hemp legalized here in Pennsylvania. So in January of 2015 at the Pennsylvania Farm Show, we announced that the legislation was going to be introduced. In 2016, it became, it became legislation. The biggest challenge that the senator faced was educating the other members that this was not marijuana, that this was not the same type of plant as marijuana. Of course, it's the cousin of marijuana. But explaining to folks that the THC level would be 0.3 or lower um, gave them some comfort that they were not participating in you know, any, any type of legislation to legalize marijuana, which there was not an appetite to do at the time. The way that this has grown over the last several years, in 2017, there was 13 applicants that were granted permits to grow industrial hemp. In 2018, it went up to 33, and this year, in the 2019 season, it was over 300 applications were granted permits to grow with unlimited amounts of acreage. The hemp research we're doing at Penn State focuses on the area of fiber production and seed oil production. So it's similar to what a farmer would grow soybeans for to press seed oil, um, or we can get textiles out of hemp. And so we're also growing it to examine what the uses of fiber are and how we better grow a crop for fiber or seed. So we're examining 12 different kinds of fiber and seed varieties to look at what does the best in Pennsylvania and the rest of the Mid-Atlantic. Many of these varieties were bred in places like Europe and Canada, and we just don't know which ones are going to work the best for our area yet. The other thing we're looking at is how do we best harvest these crops? Do we harvest them early or late? How do we get the best fiber? And should we let it ret in the field for a while before we bale it? What sorts of things can we do as farmers to end up with a good end product? Our main function in helping the industry up until re very recently was we were solely focused on getting federal legislation passed in order to create the legal framework for, to start building this industry and to allow farmers to legally cultivate hemp across the country. Now that we've accomplished that, we still have a, quite a bit of regulatory work to do with USDA and FDA, but we also strive to provide educational resources to our members, um, everything from cultivation best practices, uh, learning how to read a certificate of analysis, selecting genetics, and all the different aspects of the industry that uh, farmers and entrepreneurs need to understand before they get into the business. Some of the upsides for farmers for growing hemp that I've heard farmers talk about are the fact that this might be a good rotational crop to add in among wheat and soybeans and corn. It could potentially be a crop for animal bedding. Um, it could be used for many different things. And so the potential is limitless. However, one of the downsides is that we don't yet have a good infrastructure to process this material yet. So for a farmer, they may be taking on a great deal of risk by growing the crop before a market is truly developed. My best advice for a new farmer looking to get into the industry is to do your homework. Make sure that you understand the regulatory framework of your state that you're operating in, understanding federal requirements, um, as well as learning the best you can about what the needs of this plant are. Uh, CBD and fiber and grain cultivation are very different. Uh, CBD crops tend to be planted uh, more widely spaced. Uh, a lot of times people will grow it in plastic to help manage the weeds. Um, whereas fiber and grain hemp is cultivated more like a traditional row crop. For any farmer who's considering getting into hemp, I would first identify their market. Who would you like to sell to and what could you get for that crop before doing anything else? Then consider what equipment do I already have so that my investment is low. And so some farmers may be better set up to fiber hemp or grain hemp, while others might think it makes more sense to get into CBD production, which is more of a horticultural setup. I think it's going to be an opportunity for not only the farming community, but also the business community 
And when we get the other issues that we're going to have to face, we're going to have to face the issue of the CBD oil because there's a market for that right now. But the problem is the federal government, as we speak today, still considers it a drug. So that's going to be the next hurdle that we're going to have to overcome uh, in bringing industrial hemp to its full, full capability. So to get started growing hemp, I would definitely recommend a lot of legwork before making any decisions. There's a lot of decisions from what kind of hemp to grow to how much of it and what kind of equipment I'll need to grow it. And so Penn State has a hemp website to get you started and it will provide resources to permitting in Pennsylvania through the PDA and also some budgets that might be helpful for a farmer to run through with their own numbers to find out if hemp farming might make sense for them. The, the, the future of hemp is really only limited by our imagination. We have only begun to scratch the surface. While CBD cultivation and CBD products are what's extremely profitable right now and where the public interest is, uh, ultimately, I personally believe that fiber is going to be the future of hemp. The possibilities for fiber hemp are unlimited. So for nutritional and industrial applications, um, we, we really have only just begun. We just need the infrastructure and the equipment to be able to process it. Uh, industry is waiting, but there's still gaps in the supply chain. And until we can fill those gaps in the supply chain, it's just going to be slow and steady until we get there. But the future is limitless.